you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the, world. in the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, this is Voss here from the ChrisVossShow.com. The ChrisVossShow.com. Welcome to the big show, my family and friends. 14 years, 1,400 episodes. I think we're getting to be one of those longest running podcasts ever. Uh, we came back from the day when, uh, you know, the only way we did the podcast was we lit a little fire and then we scraped some wood together, or maybe that's how we created the fire. I never have gotten that straight, uh, which is clearly why uh, the fire department says I can't uh, burn things anymore in the barbecue. Um, but that's how we used to communicate. We just send smoke signals. And that was the Chris Voss podcast 14 years ago. We just put them up in the air and people would be like, hey, look what that dude's saying over there. That's not what we did. You know that. Anyway, guys, uh, the greatest podcast in the world for the greatest audience in the world. Uh, you guys are wonderful, and we certainly appreciate you guys because without you guys, we'd just be sitting here talking to ourselves, which is mostly what I do in the rubber room when they don't put me on the show. They just put me in the back there, put the uh, the old uh, circular vest on me, and they just uh, let me talk to myself in the corner, which is you know probably more appropriate than uh, letting me loose on the public. But this is the free time that I get to come out and do it, so be sure for <laughs> the show. This is how we set up the plugs every time with the ramble. Uh, be sure to refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Uh, guilt them into joining the show. Subscribe and go to youtube.com for just Chris Voss, goodreads.com for just Chris Voss, linkedin.com for just Chris Voss. If you haven't subscribed to the big 130,000 LinkedIn group over there, the big LinkedIn newsletter, holy crap, that thing jumped by another 500 people this uh, week. I think it's up to uh, almost 6,000 or something. And we've just been doing it for a short while. So, really smart people over there on LinkedIn and a uh, successful people one of them is not me but you know the rest of the people are uh and we're also on tiktok we're trying to be cool so go over there we had an amazing gentleman on the show he's gonna be talking to us about his entrepreneurial journey about the companies he built and everything he did we're gonna be talking about uh advanced glazings ltd and it was founded in 1995 by dr douglas milburn to develop manufacture and market sustainable and commercially viable technologies related to sunlight. Sunlight's one of my favorite things. I'm into that uh, sunlight stuff because uh, it's good for your vitamin D. I should tell people about the journey we're doing lately, but I'll get around to that on different podcasts. Doug Milburn is a longtime entrepreneur and innovator. He thrives on solving problems, and for 35 years, he has brought his vision and passion to manufacturing, engineering, software development, and process engineering. Throughout his leadership, he has aimed to create great workspaces by shaping a company's success through corporate values and ethical guidelines. He was born and raised in Nova Scotia, Canada, and he's earned his undergraduate and master's degree in physics at Mount Allison University before finishing his studies with a PhD in mechanical engineering at the University of Waterloo. In 1985, he and his wife co-founded Advanced Glazings, which develops and manufactures Solera light diffusing glass, which enables architects to create beautifully daylighted buildings that are incredibly energy efficiency, energy efficient, and they, you know, they have efficiency. So there you go. I flunked second grade. In 2001, he co-founded Protocase with uh, Steve Lilly. Protocase helps engineers, innovators, and scientists accelerate their project timelines by manufacturing custom metal enclosures and parts in two to three days with no minimum order requirements. And he took the, uh, him, uh, Lilly and Dr. Milburn took the entrepreneur leap once more in 2014 with the start of 45 Drives. A new enterprise company, 45 Drives, helps companies manage and scale their data storage needs with ultra large storage servers and clusters that are powerful, flexible, and affordable. Welcome to the show, Doug. How are you? Uh, thank you very much, Chris. You know what? I was feeling a lot younger. You said 35 years, and I'm going, <laughs> it's going to be a young entrepreneur, right? Eh? And, uh, not anymore. Oh. It's kind of an interesting journey to look back on, though, isn't it? Uh, it, it absolutely is. You know, I uh, lots of stuff to do with all three companies, just, you know, really in growth mode. So I was a really dull moment. But every now and then, uh, it's advice I got from my, my late father. He said every now and then, show up on the weekend and he'd uh, 
pour me a glass of rum at the cottage and uh, and and I'd be talking about all the problems going, hey, sis, do you ever sit back and look at what you've already done? And I said, no, nah, not really. So anyway, good thing to do though. <laughs> yeah, might be good for a book. You should put a book down. Uh, my memoirs, I keep talking about them, but someday. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to get the time for them. COVID was like a great time for stuff like that. So, Doug, give us the dot coms where people can find you and stuff about your company on the web. Sure. I, you know, I'm hoping today we'll talk lots about Advanced Glazings Limited. Uh, it's advancedglazings.com. Okay, glazings.com. Uh, and you'll find uh, about how to create better buildings with natural light in them on there. Uh, Protocase, uh, we're infrastructure for people in engineering and science and innovation who need to get their ideas turned into reality very mm -hmm. very quickly uh protocase.com there you go is the dot com for that and 45 drives.com for our enterprise storage servers and new enterprise model open source open platform there you go now, let's tell you a little bit to the audience tell us about a little bit about your origin story what got you into entrepreneurism building companies etc cetera, etc cetera? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I grew up in a small town in Nova Scotia mm -hmm. and, uh, I, you know, I don't know, kind of an ec ec eclectic person. I'd say I, uh, you know, did all kinds of sports music, uh, and, and, and academics. I, uh, I wasn't a studier, but I just, I was good at science and math and stuff. And I, I liked it cause I didn't have to really work on it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, kind of drifted my way, uh, having fun, enjoying life. I uh, got to university, loved it in university, and I loved, uh, uh, you know, I, I loved the academics. I, I got into physics. That was my, my place I went. Uh, I played rugby in university. Uh, mm -hmm. Great, great fun. Uh, I enjoyed it so much that I uh, did a second degree. Then I graduated. I said, hmm, do I have to work? And I said, no, nah, I can keep doing this. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I, I did a master's. did my master's. I actually did it in some chemical physics. It's called laser spectroscopy whole oh, wow. story yeah yeah it was cool I made extreme ultraviolet laser light and studied super cool simple diatomic gas molecules ah there you go so and, and then where did you go from there well you know what it kind of it was a formative experience i loved the research i was doing i loved playing around i, I loved the university environment uh, went off to my first conference and uh there's three people as the Canadian Association of Physicists conference. Uh, and there's three people in the whole conference that I could were really interested in the work I did. You know, it's so specialized, so obscure. Great work, love pure science, but it was just a little too uh, off on my own. You know, I just had a little bit too much social in me, I think. So I decided to go off and study with a guy uh, at University of Water that was a pioneer in solar energy. Mm -hmm. Back when solar energy wasn't popular, but I think all the cool kids go into uh, solar energy now, but not when I was there. Yeah, um, I was like swimming against the current. So I, I did my PhD in uh, in solar thermal energy with, with uh, a guy named Terry Hollins, who's a pioneer in it. There you go. So how does that lead you into advanced glazings? Well, so Waterloo is kind of you know I don't know maybe some people listening uh, know University of Waterloo. It's sort of Canada's Canada's MIT, maybe you'd call it. Uh -huh. It's it, it's math science dominant and. No disrespect to my friends who are in liberal arts there or whatever else, but really known for that. And uh, it's a place is uh, you know it's Canada's place of spinoff companies. Uh, Rim and BlackBerry came out of there as one example. Oh wow! Yeah, and there's hundreds and hundreds of companies come out of there. So it was, it was a spinoff environment. Uh, and I, I think in entrepreneurship, you know, uh, it's kind of like a genetic disease. I think you know, pe people that are entrepreneurs, you you just you just have to do it. And yeah. I, I looked, I, I finished my PhD and I, I actually had a job offer. One of my you know, external examiner committee, you know, and you do this, this PhD defense. One of my guys, uh, my examiners, uh, actually University of Chicago prof, uh, he was had a startup going and he offered me a job, which would have been a dream job. But I, I had this technology in our, in our lab that I was looking at and I'm going, you know, somebody could do something with that. And it was called honeycomb transparent insulation. It, it, it's the roots of our our product, our slower product, advanced glazings. And I, I just looked at it and I said, yeah, I, I, I just have to tackle that. So I, I skipped all the uh, sort of normal career and, and working stuff and, and jumped right into entrepreneurship for better or for worse. Well, it's been good. It turned out good. It, it turned out good. It yeah. turned out good. And, yeah. and it sounds like you hit on your first try though, right? Well, you know, it was a long run. Um, uh, I, 
you know, the way I did it, I, I'm sure, you know, so we started in, you know, it was 95, 96 when we, we started and uh, we had a very raw technology in the lab and, and we had to make this material before we could really prove it in application. And it, and it took years to figure out how to manufacture it. There's big materials research problems. So I ended up, you know, on a shoestring, you know, managed to get, get money between, you know, research funding and equity investment and everything else. And uh, in a way now, you know, the whole venture capital world is so evolved now. And it yeah. really wasn't back then. Yeah, back then. It was so shit. as, you know, pioneer, uh, the pioneer with the arrows in the back, you know, it was, it was long, slow, hard, uh, went a lot slower than it should have. But we got a product developed and we were originally going to use this material as an insulation for commercial greenhouses. Oh, really? Yeah, and and the commercial greenhouse, uh, you know, energy is the biggest bill. Heating is the the biggest bill you you write out as a. I mean, and it's called northern latitudes. Let's say you know if you're in middle U.S. north or or in Europe, northern Europe or whatever else, right? And it's uh, and these huge buildings that are unheated, and you know, and, you, and you, your dollars per square foot you get out of growing tomatoes or flowers is not that big. So the uh, the natural gas or you know bunker oil bill that you have in a 10 acre greenhouse is pretty ugly and we could save 75 percent on their heating bill wow that's quite significant so we did some test projects and we even found that plants grew better inside because the way it diffused wow. light uh-huh so but uh, we just uh, there's a little glitch in, in in feedstock material that we had to solve and and we had people knocking on our door came knocking on our door from the building industry mm-hmm and uh, where they had issues, you know, the, the problems that we solve now were brought to us from the industry and we ended up doing a pivot. Uh, and uh, I don't know, if, but it probably would have been a lot faster in the greenhouse industry. It turned out there's a lot I didn't know about the building industry, but the problem that, that, that they had was a fundamental problem that, that you know, it's, it's real and needed to be addressed. It's something people just live with in buildings. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, as I said, the rest is history. We're, we're, uh, you know, we've got about 2,000 architectural projects up now with our material. So pretty mature company. And yeah. uh, it's one of these things that, you know, as I said, I was ahead of my time. Uh, mm-hmm. The solar energy and natural lighting kids weren't cool back then. <laughs> and it's it's now the coolest thing in the block. So, uh, you know, the, 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 all of a sudden we got these tailwinds behind us and it's just, uh, it's just really, really fascinating. And we're, you know, and we're sort of a startup because we n- never really grew it. I went and spent my time on, on the other businesses mm-hmm. and it incubated and we got better and better. The product got more and more mature, got better at helping people design buildings. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we're just, yeah, it's really, really cool time for us right now. There you go. So uh, expl- you guys build something you call the Impact Engineered Daylight Diffusers. We'll get into some of the product names. But what is what is uh, what does that mean? What is uh, for the layman out there or person who doesn't understand what uh, diffusers are? Uh, how, do, how what is that and how does it work? Yeah. So so light diffusion. So okay. So here here's the problem. Let, let me. St- I'm going to go just back a step on that. So you mm-hmm. think about buildings, right? And uh, you know, and again, a lot of science and engineering sort of put forward as gobbledygook with guys in white coats, and you're supposed to be really smart to understand that. I just don't believe that's true, right? So you, you look at buildings. Uh, let me get two bookends here for us. Uh, get into, walk into a Walmart, Costco, whatever, big box store. You got no windows other than a little bit of glass in the doors, right? Again, said it's all artificial lighting, and that we call them dark boxes. They're just <laughs> not very, you know. And they're quite adequate because the paying customers come in and leave. So it's not that big a deal, right? But uh, if you have to work there, it's a miserable place to work. They're just not nice buildings to be in. Yeah. Cost effective, but uh-huh. miserable. Uh, the other bookend on the other side, uh, you go downtown, a big city, and you see the all glass towers. Mm-hmm. And they look great. Go by at night. That looks cool. You see the bones of the building inside there and all the life in it and everything else. And, uh, and and they look cool. Uh, you got all this view from inside, mm-hmm. but they're not necessarily nice buildings to be in either, because mm-hmm. it, it's either a solar oven, or you darken the glass down so much that it looks like it's like late November. Yeah, time, right. Which is gloomy if you're on the inside. You're like, this is you know absolutely uh, gloomy. Uh, excessively tinted glass. It, mm-hmm. it actually studies show that it makes people depressed. 
Wow. It, it, it's it's not good. Well, it's you know, the same as people living way up in northern latitudes who have these six-month winters. They don't see the sun. It's basically yeah. the same thing. So anyway, there's this, this happy place. Make a great building. Mm-hmm. You've got to connect to the outdoors. You need mm-hmm. view, okay, and you need daylight. Mm-hmm. And the problem with glass as a material, it's great for view, mm-hmm. but when that sun is beating down in one direction, it does nothing for you. And you end wow. up with glare, and mm-hmm. people go, damn, it's too hot. Oh, let me get some window tinting, or let me put blinds down. A study that uh, National Research Council of Canada did in uh, on, on commercial buildings, it said 65% of all window areas in commercial buildings mm-hmm. were permanently occluded by blinds. <laughs> So and it kind of stupid. defeats the whole purpose. Uh. Yeah, somebody talked to you and spent all that money on glass. You're paying for your heating bill because glass doesn't insulate. Well, other glass doesn't. Ours does. Other glass doesn't insulate well. And uh, yeah, so, and y- y- but you got to protect yourself. So this mm-hmm. happy space in the middle. What we do is help people make that connection, help you design buildings. If you use our light diffusing glass, so when you use it with vision glass, it doesn't replace it. Okay? It might replace wall. Mm-hmm. And you, it's translucent. You can't see through it. You have privacy, but it, it takes that direct beam sunlight, converts it into soft, gentle daylight, and pushes it out into the space, up onto the ceiling, out into the walls, rather mm-hmm. than just coming down and overheating the, you know, hitting the floor and overheating the zone in the uh, in the side. So it controls glare, backlights everything. So it creates great lighting patterns for you. It makes buildings that are just beautiful to be in. Wow, and and I mean, beauty of a building, and you know, the whole atmosphere makes all the difference to employees that work there and people that work there. I mean, you, you feel better when you're in that space. There's more uh, feng shui. Is that what it is? I mean, you just, you just feel better about the whole thing, especially if you have light, you know, it's, you know, look, getting down to the thing of being in a daylight building, I'm sitting here in a daylight, daylight building. I don't have the lights off in the office here on, on the office here. Oh, wow. And I, I'm building an envelope up, up there is translucent envelope when I have vision glass and I got view in front of me. Uh, you know, I, I go back to my PhD in solar energy, uh, a, a little bit of a, a paradoxical. Or the solar energy lab I was in at University of Waterloo used to be a combustion lab that was mm-hmm. built for. So they had, it was all brick walls because they said, if we ever blow anything up, we can't have windows shattering on the poor students walking by. Yeah. Uh, nice thing to be in a lab like that. But anyway, so I'd go in there, you know, I'd, I'd get in there 8.30 in the morning, you know, in the winter time in Ontario, Canada. It's... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it, it's just light. You know, you might have had half an hour, an hour of light at that time. And uh, and you walk in there, and I'd usually been there at 6 or 7 in the evening, and it's, you know, it's getting dark at 4.30. So I, I, I see a half hour of light. You get disconnected, you know, fluorescent lights back then. You know, it's LED. It's a little bit better, but it's still artificial light. You get disconnected from the world. And now, you know, I, I sit here, and I live under natural light. There is study upon study that shows people are healthier, mm. happier, uh, they buy more in retail stores. They're more productive in office and blue collar situations. Hospitals, mm-hmm. people heal better. And, and you know, that, wow. that's a study. But, you know, as I sit here, my own personal experience, you're in here and I just feel that, you know, year round, the connection. You, you know, you feel the sun early in the day. It's got different character. It's got a different spectrum, different direction. Uh, it changes through the day. You get the intensity changes. The color changes. You just live with it. It's, it's just great. It's the way we humans were meant to be. Not yeah. Meant- dark boxes or caves you know i mean we were we were you know for eons of time we lived out in the sun you know we tilled fields chased buffalo whatever you know we were doing the hunter hook gatherer thing and uh it's only been a very small select uh, period of our of our history that we've you know eh, let's put ourselves in glass buildings eh and uh i think sometimes our bodies are just not quite uh retrofitted for it uh, very well i just started a weird thing I don't know if it's a weird thing, but I, I call it my morning centering procedure. And I've been seeing all these people talk about how vitamin D from the sun is really important. And it's also important for starting your, um, oh, what the hell is it called? It's the, uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a cycle in your body of melatonin and different things um, that uh, starts a cycle of where you, you can sleep because it'll help you sleep better because it tells your body, Hey, here's the start of my day. And so I just started doing a thing four days ago where every morning when I go have my coffee, the first thing I do is I go sit in the sun for 15 minutes to get my natural vitamin D. And I probably suffered some depression over the years and different things by not taking enough vitamin D. And so I'm trying it and I'm not sure if the results are psychosomatic at this point, but I'm really enjoying it and I feel better. And so just, just having that light 
makes all the difference in the world because I spend most of my time indoors in a in a in a rubber room, like I mentioned before, tied up in a corner talking to myself. So, like you know, I I, I totally agree. I you know, my house, I got a nice sunroom in the back end of my house. It faces east. I get morning sun. I come to work. I have I, I go through the full cycle of sun. And you know, it, and vitamin D is one aspect of it. You know, there, there there's a, a our whole physiology is built around that. It's built uh-huh. about you know ramping up in the daytime. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and ramping down, uh, you know, pineal gland, uh, your whole hormone system. It, it's really, all, you know, wow. oh yeah. And, and it's all, and, and it, it, and it's, it's, it's the light level and it's mm-hmm. also the spectrum of light. The light is, is reddish, much more red. You know, it's going down the app, you know, you see sunset is, is red. The light that comes through the blue mm-hmm. light gets scattered out of it. So mm-hmm. when the sun's coming straight down overhead, we're getting much bluer light and oh, really? then morning and evening. It's much redder light. Our whole body's tuned to that. You know, we got to go through these cycles. We have to sleep as humans, and and we need to be awake when we're awake. And uh, yeah, going through those natural rhythms, uh, it, our whole physiology is tied to it, and you, uh, and, you know, our our, our, our whole well being. And it, and it's it's really amazing. I look at it. You know, it's subjective. Yeah, but I know I feel different mm-hmm. in in naturally lighted buildings, and I know at times when I'll go somewhere and I'll be in a regular buildings got a little window or the blind shot or, or not seeing the sun. I just, it just feel different. I get, I get out of touch. And I, I'm just, I count myself as lucky to be in a building that's, you know, fully naturally lighted, but anyway, incredibly important to us. Yeah, definitely. Circadia rhythms. That's the uh, thing I was uh, thinking of. Now you guys have two, I guess, major products that you guys have on your website. You have what's called the Solera and the Solera wall. Tell us about those. Sure. Uh, you know, so building a great building that has that connection, it's about mixing light diffusing mm-hmm. and view glazings on your building, right proportions, mm-hmm. right placement, right design of the spaces. So you got to get right back into the architectural side of it to do that. So, uh, you know, and, and we've gained actually 2000 projects worth of expertise on, on doing that. So when you figure that out, you figure out where you want opaque, where you mm-hmm. want translucent, where you want vision, you figure that out then like you're bound by practicalities, right? And I mean, one of the reasons we think about buildings the way we do is because we've had two materials classes. We've had opaque, we've had transparent. You know, glass actually goes back to Roman times. They invented window glass back that long ago. So, you know, we cut holes, we, you know, use stone or wood or whatever else, cut holes in it, put a window in it, uh, you know, and and yeah, it just didn't, uh, yeah, it, and you know, I mean, hey, it got our species here, right? It got us through that first part. For what it's worth, I've seen us lately. But <laughs> good, good, good point. So anyway, you move ahead, you move to this new paradigm, you understand how to build an envelope, but it, you got the practicalities you got to face. So that glass yeah. has to get on a building. Mm-hmm. So most of the buildings in the world uh, use either window systems that, that punch openings, and it's called window systems on it. The other big category of framing is, well, it's framing we use in conventional glass, a uh, big type of framing that we use is called curtain wall. So mm. if you look at a building downtown and it's an all glass building or big sections of glass, it's almost certain that's curtain wall that we're using. Oh. Um, and what we do, and, and that's an industry, you know, it's been around for forever, you know, modern curtain wall evolved, you know, going back 50, 75 years, you know, in its roots, it's mature. This contracting, it's a huge industry. It's, you know, forty billion dollars a year in North America, or something like that. So our first product that came out is called Solera, and mm-hmm. and it's most of what we sell today. Uh, Solera is glass units, so it's got two pieces of glass. It's got all our magic light diffusers and mm-hmm. insulation. We'll talk about insulation in a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got that inside it, and mm-hmm. these these sealed units come and they go into curtain wall. Wow! Okay. So that's the Solera product, and and we custom configure it. So we'll mm-hmm. design a building, look at what direction it's facing, look at how much glass we have on it, how big the space is, how light the finishes are inside. Uh, what, you know, the lighter the finishes, the more light bounces around. And we mm-hmm. tune it in and we configure the glass to be just right for that application. And wow. then, uh, you know, the architects have, uh, along with the engineers, have figured out how they're going to build the building envelope. And it's, mm-hmm. you know, curtain walls, the majority of what we do. And uh, yeah, Solera goes in window systems, curtain wall. There's another thing called storefront it goes into. And uh, it's all designed to be compatible. So it's completely seamless to get this up onto a building, going through a building design process and, and get it built. And you mentioned insulation, I think. And how does that work? 
Um, so insulation, um, you know, walls can have great insulation. You know, mm -hmm. typically, you know, once upon a time, uh, Southern climates didn't bother insulating very much, mm -hmm. which is a little bit of a mistake because, you you know, you come in to get out of the heat, you know, if you're yeah. in Texas in the summertime, you know, if you're in, uh, I don't know, if you're in Chicago, you, you, you come to get into the, out of the cold, but you have to deal with both. Insulation helps you deal with that. Mm -hmm. uh, there, and so great buildings are thermally comfortable. And if you have poor insulation, they're not that comfortable. So uh, you need insulation in buildings. Glass. So you build walls today and you can build, uh, you know, typical houses uh, that they build in middle to northern latitudes might have a, a two by six walls, build them out of two by sixes, put uh, fiberglass in that. That's about R18 insulation. Okay? The glass you buy for your window, mm -hmm. probably R3, might even be R2 if you're in you know, Florida and the old paradigm, might be R2. Single glass is R1. It's got, got no insulation, right? Mm -hmm. So... Um, we make glass and, and we can go from R3 and we can configure the glass depending on what customer wants, what they're trying to achieve. We can go all the way up to R25. So it's best insulating glass in existence. So what, what oh. you do on and, and you can do that separately. We can tune the light properties when we build the glass mm -hmm. uh, to get the lighting you want. And then you can choose, you know, fairly independently of that, you can choose what insulation you want. And if you're trying to build a building that is, you know, say, uh, you know, net zero energy usage, you might go up to R25 if you're trying to uh, lead uh, leadership in energy efficient design. Uh, if you want certification, you're building green certification, you may go up to the top end. Uh, mm -hmm. Another end, we actually have another company uh, have, we have one of our manufacturing plants. We use R3 in it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's got a bunch of process, manufacturing process in there that dumps extra heat into the building. Mm -hmm. So we don't need thermal insulation. So wow. there's no point in it. So yeah, you get what you want. Don't you don't have to pay for it if you don't want it. But if you do want it, you can get the best in the world. There you and, go. And, and and it's really, you know, the other thing that's happened, uh, you know, as we talk about new buildings, uh, building codes. The other thing when you build a building, you got to meet code yeah. for better or for worse. I mean, overall, the intention is to, to get you better buildings, right? And it's mm -hmm. going to get a, a base standard, but. Uh, you know, it gets pretty restrictive. Uh, interesting things happened just the last few years. Uh, there's an engineering standard out called ASHRAE 90.1. Uh, that's the air conditioning and heating engineers. Mm -hmm. So they put together standards for building envelope insulation. So, but what it means is, is to strictly follow the code, uh, you can only put 30% window area on your building. The other 70% mm -hmm. has to be wall. Mm -hmm. So effectively, and most places are adopting this into the building code. So what it means is you can no longer build an all glass building mm -hmm. and, and, and you get some pretty dull looking buildings when you get down to that. <laughs> but uh, what it means with us, with R25, is it means you can you totally build an all glass building at that point. Wow. So. Now you guys, uh, with the Solera wall, you, you have what's called a cladding system. What is a cladding system? I'm going to learn something new today. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, and it's interesting, you know, you have a fundamental problem and you, you dig into it, you get all these other problems you have to solve. <laughs> uh, so there's a whole category of buildings, metal buildings mm -hmm. we use uh, for it. Uh, factories, uh, you know, the big box stores kind of fall under metal, generally under metal building and, and, and the like, uh, you know, steel structure cladding over them. And they're, they're often, you know, try to, they're built to a lower price point mm -hmm. than, than, uh, your downtown building, your corporate head office. Uh, so, but that whole world has been climbing upstream and making nicer looking. More, you know, the old ones, you go back 30 years ago, it was all, you know, Butler building. Uh, Butler makes great steel buildings, a lot of corrugated, you know, then it was corrugated steel, mm -hmm. uh, you know, bag insulation inside, rough and ready industrial buildings. Well, that whole world is climbing the food chain in a huge way. And we get something called insulated metal panels now that 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 they use to clad. Uh, a bunch of other ways you can do it, but uh, insulated metal panels is, is a really cool way to do it. Great insulation, look way better, really mm -hmm. fast to build. Uh, if you try to break into a glass system as you start building up, you know, build a, a wall in the bottom, the top, and then try to put a strip of glass in it, uh, go into a curtain wall or something, it breaks your all the elegance and all the fast building and, and, and the whole cost paradigm. It's just way more expensive. So we developed something, uh, it's called Solera Wall, and, and inspired by that, uh, and it is glass in a panel system. 
So the glass does not require framing. And mm -hmm. they come on as panels. There's a little strip, uh, aluminum strips go on underneath it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you basically, uh, it tongue and grooves into insulated metal panels or any adapter strip into any other construction you want. Tongue and groove the panel in, toggle bolts in the side, next panel tongue and grooves in directly over primary steel structure. Or we got our other structure, actually got a building in uh, in uh, Montreal, Canada, that's going up in a in an engineered timber frame, like a, mm -hmm. a large town hall library building that's going up. So it goes over any primary structure and it's just tongue and grooves without framing, leave the cost, leave that thermal break. You know, framing goes from the outside, the inside conducts your heat out to the outdoors or in from the outdoors. Wow. And uh, takes way longer to build, way more labor. So this stuff is lower overall installed cost. Oh, so wow. you can put glass into buildings looks great too it, it, it's absolutely trim you don't have all this ugly framing sticking out mm -hmm. the inside and the outside and it's just this flush wall of glass trim lean, uh, lean trim uh scandinavian look you know minimalist look to it so uh that yeah, whole other direction that we that we have there you go so you you work on a lot of new buildings uh we talked before the show in the green room uh you know there's there's uh los angeles downtown and uh san francisco downtown and i'm not sure about the other cities in america but i imagine they're suffering as well uh you know covid people went to remote work and remote work uh, people aren't coming back for the most part so there's uh, about 30 percent in both those major cities of empty office buildings right now and uh my understanding is in like san francisco they're looking to convert those into you know some sort of living space everyday living space like condos apartments etc cetera, etc cetera, and turn them from office buildings to people who will live because maybe they would work downtown or support the downtown uh economy there um do you guys uh have products that that can fit that and and uh and help with the, maybe some of those retrofitting because some of the buildings are really old they're 30 or 40 years old yeah, it's, you know, two comments to that. I mean, one is retrofit. Yeah, we do all kinds of retrofit. Mm -hmm. It's really, really common when somebody comes in and does a full, you know, I'd say probably 30% of our work, mm -hmm. it, it's taken, you get good bones in a building and you, mm -hmm. you rip the envelope off and, 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 and retrofit it. And uh, yeah, and, you know, doing that, your energy upgrades, natural light upgrades, et cetera. So, so we do lots of that. Uh, the other thing you touch on there is residential. Mm hmm and most of what we've done, we do, you know, uh, office, uh, you know, white collar workspace, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and the push there, it's productivity and recruitment, mm -hmm. trying to make great workspace for employees. Uh, blue collar workspace factories absolutely works great in it. Sports facilities, mm -hmm. uh, sports facilities, large spaces, uh, sports facilities, uh, you know, performance spaces, uh, you know, concert theater spaces. Uh, can uh, daylighting in them, uh, spectacular rinks, uh, Sacramento Kings practice facility, Toronto Raptors practice facility have natural lighting that we've done in it. Wow. So that, uh, schools, education, students mm. learn way better under natural light. Oh, bad. That's most of what we do, uh, mm. but residential, we have a few really cool residential projects. Um, and the value proposition residential, we don't do like single residential. It's, uh, it, it, and it's where we are right now. It's just a lot of work to sell a, a single residence. We have mm -hmm. some architects' houses and things we've done, and I'm building a summer house right now that has our daylighting in it, but it, it's not a line of business for us, really. Uh, but we have so, some projects uh, that, uh, you know, one of them comes to mind, I think it's 10 Chelsea's address, New York City, Highline District, New York City. Uh, it's small, you know, small apartments, right? Oh, wow. And, and, and they're not cheap in Manhattan, if you know what I mean. Well, you'd know that better than I would. I, I live out in the middle of nowhere in a small place, but you'd understand that. Oh, yeah, uh, I've seen that movie. And... Uh, Put natural light in a small space, feels mm -hmm. bigger. Uh, okay. They have privacy issues. You're, you're crammed in downtown. You got privacy issues. What happens is uh, you build small rental space. Uh, you know, it's got to be small. You're in a city. It's, it's just got to be. Uh, and, and what happens, the blinds will go down for privacy reasons. You mm -hmm. lose your natural light. You start feeling pretty crammed in. So uh, our architects designing these uh, you know, multi-unit high-rise residential and learning how to use natural light mm -hmm. in the right spaces and your active spaces in them. And uh, just, it's a whole difference. Uh, and natural light, you know, look, when people go, you go look at real estate and go, oh, great, look at the natural light in it. It's just natural light, just, you know, a study I saw, you know, good natural light in a residential space, it sells or rents 
for 10 to 15 percent more wow and it doesn't cost you 10 to 15 percent more to put it in there so wow. it's a huge value proposition to developers yeah, yeah, a good investment for the long term. What do you see the future of your business going to? I mean, obviously, green and solar technologies and industries are going to keep excelling. It seems like you know we're moving towards that uh, thing where they're just becoming more and more popular. Uh, what do you see the future of your industry or your business going to here? We are, you know, big big tailwinds for us right now, business wise. Right. So, uh, you know, building code, uh, mm -hmm. you know, can't build an all glass building envelope unless you use our glass. Ah. That's cool. Uh, you know, more and more architects are catching on to that. Mm -hmm. Architects and, and, and developers, building owners catching on to that. So there's a tailwind for us. Uh, the whole drive towards green. Uh, I, I'm a big believer in my PhDs in solar energy. I'm a big believer in, in green. Uh, now, let me qualify that. Uh, the Greta Thunberg, let's screech and say there's panic green. No, thanks. <laughs> Building better buildings, natural light, mm -hmm. lower energy bills, you know, sensible, renewable energy that's cheaper than other energy. Thumbs mm -hmm. up, right? So we got that, those tailwinds. Well, we got the other, you know, the, the other one. I don't mean to be too disparaging about people that, that believe in or think it's an emergency, but it's not the way I see the world. But uh -huh. either way, our solution is good for them. Mm -hmm. uh, natural light. Uh, you know, the other tailwind for us is more and more organizations. Well, you know, the world's more competitive. You want to build a building and you want to build a sports facility that's great. Uh, a university, you know, basketball facility. You want to build a school. It's, it works better. Uh, mm -hmm. That human side, go back yeah. 40 years ago, people barely cared. You know, they just put up buildings the same way we built them. <laughs> they threw a bestest in them. They're like, yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, absolutely. We're, <laughs> we're good. She's all good. As long as you get in there. Uh that expectation that when you walk in a building, it's going to be a great building. You got mm -hmm. employees in a building. You know, when you walk into a building, you know, the building I'm in, which is the, I'm actually sitting here in, uh, in, in uh, 45 drives computer company's head office here uh, and uh, you know, recruiting. It's everything. It's all about your people. They walk into our building and they go, wow, this is nice. And it's not nice because you try to impress by putting in marble or gold leaf. It's nice because mm -hmm. it's a truly nice building. We have to actually two secrets to it. Natural light is number one. Mm -hmm. Number two is fresh air. We do oh. four to five times the normal amount of fresh air. There's all oh. kinds of research that says if you let people sit in the normal amount of CO2 with normal ventilation rates, you dumb them down. They, they get sleepy. Yeah. They get slow. They don't do. They don't work as well. We pay people to come in here and be smart. So mm -hmm. we don't want to dumb them down. So natural light, fresh air, you create a better building, employees more productive, they appreciate working there, gives you a competitive edge. So yeah, and it's a, you know, it, it's a really large potential market we're in, uh, we're a pioneer in it, and we're an interesting pioneer because I said we've got this long incubation period, where we got mm -hmm. it right. So it's just a really cool time for us. So I'm gonna grow this thing and uh, we're just having a blast. It's, it's like great fun, great industry. Uh, buildings are exciting. You know, you see these buildings, you walk into them and you go, wow. And, and, you know, when the owners and the occupants go, wow, it's, it's really, it's nice. And in a, in a world where, you know, we have this, this big, uh, revision that's been done with, uh, people staying home or what I referred to it earlier is, um, it's, it's Tuesday, the brain's gone. Um, but you know, people doing the, they're working for home. And remote work, that's the word I was looking for. You know, getting people back to buildings and buildings that they're going to enjoy and they're beautiful and that sunlight. Like I am like I said, I'm tuning in with my life is how important sunlight is because, you know, I with the rework or technically I've been working at home since, what, 2004, you get, a, you know, you get dark and, it, and it's in, and sometimes I think I've probably suffered some depression for not having enough vitamin D and uh, it makes, it just makes all the difference in the world. And if you want to get people back from, the uh, staying home and doing the remote work thing, building good buildings and having healthy buildings can make a difference. When we, when we, uh, when I had most of my companies were brick and mortar back in the day, uh, I was notorious for rating C class buildings because they were cheap and we could expand through them very quickly because they were usually empty. But there were there are employees that sometimes suffered and got sick. I think there's a thing called uh, you know getting sick from sick building, building syndrome. Sick building syndrome. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think it's a combination of light and light and air are the two dominant yeah. things in it. You yeah. know, and we that, that funny you talk about that. When I started Advanced Glazing, we're in pretty third world space. You know, I'm a poor entrepreneur. I'm poor church mouse, and uh, <laughs> and and uh, you, you, you do what you can. And I, I just think we moved into our first daylighted building, uh, 
you know, first well daylighted building would have been 2007 when we moved in, or two, mm-hmm. early 2008, and it's just dramatic, you know, what it did to our employees and how much yeah. better I felt when I was in it. Yeah. Um, we got to get you some material. Eh? You got to find your own contractor for it, but we'll get your house, we'll get your uh, studio naturally lighted and, uh, yeah, we'll get you fixed up, Chris. <laughs> there you go. The uh, I mean, I had, P- I had a couple of employees that were getting sick from the fluorescent light uh, and probably some other things in the building. I mean, I remember one building we rented was sold, had a giant, huge lead wall that a, I think a dentist's office had put in. And I remember going downstairs and looking at this lead wall, and they were moving it for all the obvious reasons. But it was crazy, you know, and I'm like, that's been in this building? Uh, okay, whatever. Explains why the rent's so cheap. But uh, no, it's, it's yeah, I've seen employees get sick. I've seen them, you know, they hate the lighting on the wall. You know, the you know some rooms are darker than others, or you know they always want a Windows office. So everyone's always complaining for those. So this is really important stuff. Um, what what are some advice to uh, to other entrepreneurs out there, people in the audience that are uh, aspiring or uh, struggling, or just entrepreneurs like myself? What, what's some advice you give to entrepreneurs on how to you know you clearly had a vision for this company and stuck it out through a long time uh, before it finally became popular to be green. Well, you know what? There's a couple of things. I mean, number one, you, you have to have a vision of something that's you got to solve people's problem. Mm-hmm. There right? you go. And, and I mean, and, and that that's clear. I won't go into that because everybody talks about that and they know that uh, <laughs> you got to solve people's problems. Uh, how you do it? Mm. Um, you know, if you're just driven by money, uh, I, 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 it's a tough road to hoe. I think because mm-hmm. uh, I'll tell you. A, a real business, and and you know we're in one. We're, we're creating our own market segment, right? And and uh, do a change in the world in the way the way people think of buildings and and uh, and whatever. Uh, it's hard, but it's a people thing, right? Mm-hmm. And you think of what you do as an entrepreneur. Uh, the way I look at it, it's bringing people together. There you it's go. It's understanding and having empathy for people in your market segment. What's their work and life, working life, or or other life of its consumer or whatever else, what's their life like? How mm-hmm. can get better understanding that and figuring out how to communicate with them? Mm-hmm. On the other side, you have your workforce, okay? And you look at that and you go, you need people to do the work. Otherwise, you're self-employed. You're not an entrepreneur. Yeah. And you look at that and you, you got to set up a true win-win situation mm-hmm. that works for everybody. Everybody needs to come out of it feeling like they got a fair deal. Mm-hmm. Sort of thing. And your employees have to want to come to work and your customers have to want to come buy from you. Your investors want to have to come or want to come uh, invest in you. Mm-hmm. Your suppliers, you know, don't be too hard on your suppliers. They're a partner in what you do too. Damn, it's yeah. a partnership and you can get it if you do it right. Uh, and, and this is the word culture. Mm-hmm. And it's become really big as, as we as we grow. And I, I wish I, you know, everybody says, wish I knew what I knew now when I started. <laughs> But it's, it, it, it's about culture and it's mm-hmm. setting it up. And we, we, we do something, we call them DNA documents. Oh, really? And, and as we grow, and, and the DNA, the idea that there's a code oh. that determines all the decision-making, the decision-making term determines the material. Uh, we have something that's a, uh, ethical guidelines is our people DNA. It, it's everything oh. you need to know to make a decision in, this or in these organizations that's aligned with everything else we do, aligned with the health of the organization, and aligned with your best interest. We have a bunch of other things. We have, uh, and we, we get down to very specific things. We got something called project DNA. Mm-hmm. So, you, you know, the projects, development projects, marketing projects, anything that's not operations is projects. How do you get projects done and get them done fast and effectively and mm-hmm. have fun doing it and want to come back and do another one? We have our set of guidelines, went through best practice, extracted. We train people very, very heavily in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are also, I talk about working at home. Uh, and again, everybody has a different view on it. And uh, uh, I started working home when I started Advanced Glazings. My first six months were, well, it's before I started. It was market research and financing it and everything else. And I worked out of home. Mm-hmm. And I just, I guess I'm a social person or something like that. I couldn't wait for my wife to get home from work. I, I the, the isolation I felt was just awful. We hire people who, who see the world that way. Uh-huh. And our people, we want people that want to come to work. We love the synergies you get. I mean, people got to learn how to 
sit down, shut up, get the work done, right? Yeah. You gotta true. be productive. But there's this inspiration you get as as a group and this this alignment you get and this reinforcement you get when people work together and they get common values. And those common values are part of what we codify. We hire for it and we write it down and keep people aligned. You come to work, the group runs uh, the other thing we teach. Uh uh, a great workplace is, you know, it's great to have a good building and all, and, and that good to have good work to do, you know, decent paycheck, but it's, it's determined by the people around you, yeah. whether you like coming to work or not. So it's no fun working with assholes. So don't be an asshole. We teach everybody that they do an orientation set to two hours with me. Don't be yeah, an the, asshole. The, the company is you. So I, I, I paraphrase it, don't be an asshole, but it's basically, that's basically it. It's like, having good people around to treat you just treat with respect you don't have to like everybody treat mm-hmm. them with respect you come into a workplace where everybody is treated with respect people will get to like the workplace there you go i love that concept the dna of a company dna of projects i i've never really thought about it from that angle but it, it kind of gives it that central formation by which everything uh evolves or or expands from that and it, with no it's, micromanagement you, you know there's nothing wow. worse you bring people in to make decisions and drive the company forward nothing worse than going back and saying uh i know you worked your arse off and you you know you did everything you could to make the best decision but that was really stupid and it sucks mm-hmm. right so give them the tools so they can make great decisions then they get autonomy and then uh, you know the place just runs great, right? And 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 they're happy. They got autonomy. They got respect for the people around them. And uh, yeah, it just clicks and it just it works great. We're between the organizations. We have about four hundred fifty people now, and it, uh, it 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 just runs. The vast majority of we do our surveying and everything else inside. We got scores that beat the uh, all the tech guys that got the foosball tables and everything else. We beat them and by by a long shot in most of our surveys. So there you go. There you go. So a uh, quick speed round here of just some fun stuff. Which is better, Rush or Nickelback? <laughs> Rush. Rush. This is a Canadian thing, folks, for those of you who don't know. Uh, and That's is my trailer- vintage there, too, eh? So- there you go. I'm, I'm a big Rush fan, too. Um, <clears throat> huge Rush fan, actually. Uh, and then, uh, but I just want a confirmation of my own bias. <laughs> uh, so that, was, that was easy setup. Uh, and then, uh, is Trailer Park Boys uh, not the greatest TV show that Canada's ever produced? Oh, Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> I love it. You know, uh, let me just throw you a little uh, little thing in here. We, uh, uh, their their production company, mm-hmm. they produce on our computers from Forty Five Drives. Oh, do they? So, wow. Yeah, and, and, and they're, they're down the road. I, I, you know, we're Nova Scotia, Canada. Uh, you know, for people who don't know Nova Scotia, we are those old flat Earth things where the elephants mm-hmm. hold up the Earth and water comes over the edge. That's where mm-hmm. we are in North America, right? We're right in the edge. Uh, but uh, Trailer Park Boys is Halifax, and is. Uh, which is about that's yeah, about four hours drive from here mm-hmm. and uh it's nova scotia culture and i i, I you know we, we we love it i just absolutely love the show oh. i love the show too they kind of run in their own thing i think right now they're kind of keeping it going on i think on the internet or something or on tiktok i see yeah. it so yeah. yeah it's uh it's great i used to have people that my some of my friends back in the day used to call me ricky and i'm just like serious yeah. am i that bad and well, like, yeah Oh. There, there you go. Um, all right. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show, Doug. Uh, give us your .com so people can find you on the interwebs, please. Sure. Advancedglazings.com. Okay. There you go. Uh, protocase.com and mm-hmm. 45drives.com. There you go. There you go. Well, it's been wonderful to have the show and very insightful and inspiring for other entrepreneurs that want to take their vision and go on a journey that you've definitely been successful on. Thank you very much, Chris. It was a pleasure. There you go. And uh, pleasure is all mine, sir. Uh, also, to my audience, our most pleasurable, a brilliant audience that I can't suck up ever to enough, uh, go to goodreads.com for just Chris Foss, youtube.com for just Chris Foss, linkedin.com for just Chris Foss, and uh, check out that uh, TikTok. We're trying to be cool over there. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time. And that should have it.